Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and this is the Daily Brief. It is Monday, August 5th. There are 1,180 Russians off the battlefield, six tanks, 31 armored combat vehicles, 69 artillery pieces, 68 vehicles, and fuel tanks. If we look at Andrew Perpetua's list, it's about one to one. It's not not really great. Uh, and it was like that yesterday too. He didn't publish his list yesterday. He was backed up. And um, yeah, so that's where we are. Overnight, 24 out of 24 Shahi drones shot down over Ukraine. Now, I looked into the articles and I couldn't find any missiles being shot down. And that could be oversight on my part. Um, but I, I just, I didn't see it. Uh, but 24 is somewhat comforting in a weird way because when you only see five or seven or something like that, you know that they're gathering strength for another massive uh, attack. And so if they're spending two dozen, that's actually good in a weird way. It, it's it's weird. Like, uh, like I see a lot of AI papers as a professor now. And when I see a grammatical mistake, it's not a good thing, but I at least see something that is, it's not AI. And so that's somehow comforting. It's weird like that. Okay. Uh, Zelensky praises Ukraine's strikes on military targets inside Russia. So the Russians are spending their time harassing Ukrainians. Uh, they'll, they'll strike at power plants, but they'll also strike at residential buildings. The Ukrainians are very judicious about what they hit. They're trying to make every hit count. I'd like to thank each of our soldiers and all those who work in our defense industry for striking Russian airfields, oil refineries, and logistics, as Zelensky said in his statement. Every strike that accurately responds to Russian bombs that destroys Russian logistics, Russian bases, that makes it more difficult for the occupier to stay on our land. Every strike brings the just end of the war closer. And I think he's right. I mean, that's that's exactly what they're trying to do, and that's exactly what the effect will be. Okay, Ukrainian drone strikes on Russia's Morozovsk air base, confirmed by satellite imagery to have destroyed not only weapons, warehouses, but also a Su-34 bomber as well. So that was yesterday or the day before, I'm trying to remember which, but yeah, that's, that's a good uh, effect. Residents of the city of Azov, Russia, are watching epic fire as the industrial zone is on fire. And so we're seeing that there. And we're also seeing that last night, Russia's Volgograd saw an explosion at a power substation leading to a fire. Russian telegram channel Astra says that the explosion caused a blackout in one of the city's districts. Electricity started to gradually reappear by morning. The cause of the explosion has not been yet known, but I would guess it was the Ukrainians involved. Partisan sabotage a key railway hub in occupied Donetsk. So I saw this and I thought, hey, this sounds familiar. Partisans from Atesh followed last month's destruction of a railway tracks near Yekaterinburg, transporting North Korean ammunition by setting fire to a key railway in occupied Donetsk. Well, they did it again. They sabotaged this uh, key railway hub as w again, like they did about a month ago. The situation in Pokrovsk and Toretsk directions remain difficult. The fighting is already taking place within the city of Toretsk. Small villages have been captured uh, in the Pokrovsk direction. Russian troops are advancing and their main strategy has not changed. This is according to Arthur Rehi. Uh, using aerial bombs and artillery to destroy the city entirely and then inducing huge massive infantry. That's their strategy. They've been doing this. So the F-16s being here and extra anti-aircraft artillery coming in, that is what they need to stop the Russian strategy because their strategy is just to do that. Aerial bombs, artillery, destroy everything and then move, you know, meat wave infantry in. So Hopefully, they'll be able to adjust that strategy by pushing the planes back. Uh, he said one other really interesting thing here. The losses are huge by any standards. Commanders are sending people across open fields in frontal attacks. Failure to follow orders is punishable by execution. Well, this is going to lead into a whole different problem set, and that is that they need to recruit more in Russia, but they, they don't really care about individual lives. They just care about taking the real estate uh, in a significant way. Okay. 
On 31 July 2024, the Russian state Duma approved of a bill that would strip citizenship from naturalized citizens if they fail to register for military service. This is according to the British Defense Intelligence update. The bill was co-sponsored by the Duma speaker, uh, indicating approval from the Kremlin. And so, yeah, they're going to disproportionately use um, naturalized citizens rather than call for general mobilization to keep the general population from being upset about the special military operation. Now, I saw this headline, mortality in Ukraine in 2024 is three times higher than the birth rate. The headline's a little bit misleading because it se seems so ominous because we think it should be one to one, but that's not how it has been because of the population curve in Ukraine. A total of eight 87,655 children were born in Ukraine in the first half of 2024, which is 9% down from the same period last year. And that makes sense. At the same time, 250,972 deaths were recorded during this period. But those aren't all war related. That's, that could be natural causes uh, as, as well. Currently, there are three deaths for every newborn in Ukraine. In 2018 to 2020, that's before the war, the figure was two per child. Okay, so that makes sense demographically that just an older set and not as many children being born, which really means that there's about a third more than usual rather than the three times as much. Okay, uh, for comparison, 132,595 children were born in Ukraine in the first half of 2021. This figure has now decreased by 1.5 times. The lowest number of babies was born in the frontline oblast, 221 in Herzon, 702 in Donetsk. No babies were registered during this time in Luhansk. And, and that makes sense, right? I mean, you're in a legitimate war zone, so that's going to be like maybe some parents are moving to the West, maybe they're moving outside the country, maybe they're just not having children because it's very, very dangerous. Okay, Ukraine receives 3.9 billion grant from the U.S. budget for support. The grant is part of a $60 billion support package. That was the one that was approved back in April. So it's about 4 billion of that 60 billion. Top managers of the Patriotic Park, the construction of which was supervised by former Defense Minister Ivanov, remember him, he was arrested a little while back for corruption, have been detained in Moscow. So the top managers of this were also arrested for corruption as well. Top managers of the park were detained as part of a fraud case. So I, they're just working their way down the chain with corruption charges. The SBU says it neutralized a large-scale Russian FSB spy ring. Nine suspected agents were simultaneously arrested for gathering intelligence on Ukrainian military positions, critical infrastructure, and uh, to aid Russian missile and drone attacks. Well, they're going to blend right in because Russians and Ukrainians look fairly similar. Um, and so this is what happened here as a result of a multi-stage operation. Nine Russian agents were simultaneously detained in Zaporizhia, Sumy, Donetsk, Odessa, and Kir Kirovrad regions. Among the Russian agents, there were two managers and a university student who recorded the movement of Ukrainian special trains, as well as a former police officer who provided the occupiers with data on the consequences of Russia's attack on Ukrainian hydroelectric plants. The defendants were noticed by FSB due to active commenting in pro-Kremlin telegram channels. After remote recruitment, the traders contacted their Russian curators through anonymous chatbots in a popular messenger, the SBU said. Wow, that's how they got these guys to work for them. Okay, uh, let's look at the F-16s. Now, we know the F-16s arrived. It was first six. Now, 10 are totally in country. Um, and there's going to be another 10 by the end of the year and then upwards of 80 somewhere in 2025. So this is what the F-16s look like. First, uh, here's a little flying of the F-16s so that you can see what it looks like there. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. Now, how effective they're going to be is going to be based on how many they can mass, how many they can gather and use in force. Meanwhile, Russians downplayed the arrival of F-16s, contrary to the previous information campaigns that labeled F-16 transfer as a red line. Remember? There were all kinds of red lines. No attackums, that's a red line. No tanks, that's a red line. No patriots, that's a red line. No F-16s, that's a red line. But they're there, and yeah.
You get it. Uh, it only took until today for the Russian mill bloggers to realize that most of the F-16s are, in fact, mock-ups. Boy, are these morons slow on the uptake, says Andrew Perpetua. So, so they're realizing that what looks like F-16s uh, in the satellite imagery or wherever they're getting pictures of it, uh, there are actually lots of dummy F-16s to keep the Russians guessing so that if they do try to strike, uh, they might not get the right one. Okay. Five ill-76 military aircraft come out of order due to supplies of defective parts. And we talked about this not too long ago, but let's follow up on this. This is from Pravda.ru. So it could be slanted, but it was actually really interesting. The Russian Ministry of Defense reported damages of 130 million rubles due to the supplies of defective aircraft parts for the Aleutian ill-76 military transport aircraft. Again, this is from Pravda.ru. The investigative committee of Russia opened a criminal case into fraudulent actions carried out with spare parts supplied for the military Aleutian Il-76 aircraft. Investigators interrogated managers and founders of the BLMZ plant. According to the investigation, between 2017 and 2022, employees of the enterprise purchased low-quality bearings that did not meet the requirements of the design documentation. And it, I, I would gather, and it didn't say this, but I would gather that it was due to corruption. Okay. Switching gears a little bit, the other day I showed you this interesting video of in China, they were launching these sparrow looking drones. They look just like a bird, right? So China's developing this bird shaped reconnaissance drone under the pigeon program. Well, I just saw this other video of something that looks like a dog. Now, it looks a little bit too perfect in its mechanisms to actually look like a dog, but it's a reconnaissance drone from the 28th mechanized Kurt company, and it looks like a drone. It gets excellent feedback or, or recording of what's going on, and until you get close, it kind of just looks like a dog that's a little bit too perfect. And uh, it, it's pretty interesting what's happening with drone warfare. So that's all that I have for you, my friends. Here is uh, Project Constantine's uh, update. It's there at 110,000 out of 320,000. So they're slowly moving up. If you want to give to Project Constantine, be sure to use the official link. It's donorbox.org, Project Tetiana. And we'll end with this. Three conspiracy theorists walk into a bar. You can't tell me that's just a coincidence. Okay, my friends, that's it. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.